Hey guys, so in this video we're pouring a concrete floor for a duplex. Two, a two unit home with a garage in the middle. So stay tuned for that. So this is the building we're pouring the duplex concrete floors in. You can see it's got a unit over here, it's got another unit over here, then the garage is in the middle. It's about 80 feet long by 28 feet wide. And this is what we're pouring, this is what you're watching today on the video. So we got about 30 yards of concrete we're pouring today of 3500 PSI with microfiber mesh and this is an interior mix we're using here today so we don't really need air entrainment in it we also got like if you've watched any of my other videos you know I use a mid-range water reducer so we can pour a, a pretty loose slump to make it a lot easier pouring you know the three of us you know me Darren and Luke we're just basically a three-man crew we pour concrete every single day so you know, we don't want to pour concrete that's really hard to pull around, hard to straight edge and stuff like that with just three of us. So we use a mid-range water reducer. Sometimes we'll even use a high-range water reducer depending on how far we got to pull the concrete just to help make it easier to pull around and, and not have to use water to loosen it up. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm making a wet pad. Some of you guys have asked about this and we use these wet pads as a reference point to screed from. So that pad I'm making right there and I'm shooting it with my laser is the exact same height as the top of the wall on the outside is and that's what we're matching the floor to is that top of wall so I'll make those pads wherever we need them you know generally we'll, we'll use a 12 foot or a 14 foot screed and I'll make those as close as we need them you know so we can strike our wet pads into the concrete and then we can use those wet pads to use the vibra screed from there that screed demon from mbw is a power screed and that's how we're going to end up screeding the floor to get it level first thing we're going to do though is just dump this truck out and get it empty this section right here is is about a 30 by 30 foot section so that's going to pretty much take up that one truck he's going to empty out right there and then we'll get rid of him and we'll start the second truck out back but we like to empty out, at least get that first truck emptied right out and get it right back to the batch plant and then he can use it for another job. We're, this is also about 6.30 in the morning so we, we always start early in the morning. We like early pours and when we start early, you know, we, we don't usually ever have a delay in getting trucks. We usually get the first round, which is a big deal to us. We, we want to get our trucks right back to back to back if we need them. So you can see Darren and Luke, they're striking our wet pads there based off the pads that I make. And you'll see in a minute how we use those with the, the Screed Demon Vibra Screed there. There you can see how easy that is to Screed using that Screed Demon. You know, it just takes takes a little practice but you can just run it right on top it floats right on top of the concrete all you got to make sure is you're just you're nice and level you're steady pulling it back and you got a good guy raking the concrete behind you and it's pretty easy to level the floor using that so that's just about a little under a thousand square feet we just did there with one truck you know, and it probably took us, it probably took us all of 15 or 20 minutes really to get that, that side leveled out and both loaded. With a three-man crew, you know, when you got three experienced guys, you can pour quite a bit of concrete and keep up with it. You know, especially if you understand how the concrete sets, how it dries, you know, your temperature's outside, is it, is it hot out, is it cool out? That all plays a factor in how quick the concrete's gonna set. We're pouring on styrofoam today, and you, you saw all those those tubes in the in the concrete right there. Those are radiant heat, so they're gonna pump hot water through those tubes and heat the concrete, which in turn will end up heating the house. So this is what we call a radiant heat floor. Most of them we do are like this, a four inches thick. 
and they'll end up putting some other type of flooring over this probably I mean you can use the concrete as your finished floor if you want and just polish it or just seal it we're gonna power trial it really nice and smooth here today but I think the builder said he's gonna end up putting some type of flooring over this some type of click flooring or hardwood flooring or something like that What you see, I got those forms up there, those 2x12s. That's going to end up being the garage right in the middle. We're not pouring the garage floor today. That's in, that's on a different day. But they did want us to pour that little knee wall in the middle of the garage. And you'll see that at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. He just wanted to keep his, his uh, wood wall, his stick built wall, up off the concrete floor in the garage. So he wanted that little knee wall poured in the middle. So the back of this, the back of this duplex here that we're pouring right now is connects. You know, it'll connect both both units together, but it's pretty much just like the utility area in each duplex. So because of all the pipes and stuff we're going around, we're just using a, a hand screed in there and just going from top of wall to top of wall and get that pot screeded off. In case you guys are wondering, we we're using we're using pretty much all Marshalltown tools in this video, except for the screed demon. The screed demon, the the, the power screed is from MBW, and then all the hand tools we're using is from Marshalltown. So if you guys want to check out any of those, I'll have links for those down in the description, as well as that I'll have that Dewalt pencil vibrator too. We use that a lot to make sure our edges are nice and smooth when we strip the forms. You know, it'll vibrate out any little air pockets so you can check that too down in the description I'm just getting that little piece bolt loaded so we're on to the second truck now and what we're going to do is pour this pour a strip out down the back of the second unit so we're on to the second unit get him emptied out and then we can back the third truck right into the front of this unit you can see how close together they put those those radiant heat tubes, they run them about 10 to 12 inches apart in there in order to heat that floor efficiently. We probably pour, we pour floors every week with radiant heat tubes in it up here in Maine. I mean, that's just one of the ways people heat their houses up this way. Let me know down in the comments where you're from and, you know, what's the most ways people heat houses where you're from. That'd be interesting to know. A lot of people use the heat pumps up here too because of the heating and the in the air conditioning of the heat pump. So those are pretty popular up this way. As you can see that second truck he's he's taken off and now we're on to the third truck. So we'll get that screeded, the second truck screeded out, and then we can finish dumping this third truck. Make sure you hang out again to see us pour a little knee wall in the garage. And then I got also something at the very end of the video to, for you to check out if you want to learn how to pour concrete like us. So make sure you stick around for that also. If you guys like these kind of videos, you know, please give me a thumbs up. It helps my videos rank better in, in YouTube. And also, if, if you're not a subscriber yet, you know, please go, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week. We specialize in all types of concrete flat work. So if you want to learn about concrete, you know, subscribe to the channel. All right, so we're on to this third truck now. We're probably right around an hour into the pour. We got two trucks dumped and back, headed back. And now we're gonna get this third truck. So it's probably around 7.30 in the morning right now. And we should have this thing all in by about eight o'clock in the morning. And then we're just hanging around waiting for the sun to come up. So it'll dry up, set up, and we can power trial this. I'm just going to leave Luke and Darren here today to power trial this. I've got something else, some other jobs i got to go get ready for the rest of the week. But that's typically what we'll do is we'll go pour, you know, a house, a house and garage, a couple garages or whatever. And, you know, I'll leave the guys to, to finish. Then I'll go get jobs ready, make sure everything's lined up. Where we're from here, you know, i got to have concrete ordered in advance for at least a week in advance, sometimes more, because of how busy the concrete companies are. So I'll have concrete lined up for the whole week and sometimes into the following week. 
you know, I got to tell them if I need one truck, two trucks, three trucks per day or whatever I need for that day. And, and my yes, my schedule changes a lot based on the weather, based on people not getting their jobs ready when they said they're going to. But I got to make sure that I at least have concrete lined up well in advance so I get it because... You know, these, these concrete companies, like this company we're using today, they, they got about nine trucks. So if I need three of their trucks, first thing, that's a third of their fleet. You know, generally we'll use three trucks, two trucks, sometimes four trucks. So I got to let them know. That way we stay busy and there's no delays in what we're doing. You can see how nice and easy it is to screed with that screed demon. That's the builder over there on the left. He's the guy that's doing all the building here. So we got the rest of this the rest of this second part of the duplex poured. Like I said, we didn't do the garage today. There's also a patio right where I'm standing. There's a little entryway patio. There's one on both sides that we do later on when we do the garage. And then there's also a big patio across the back of this thing that's 80 feet long and goes out about 12 feet. That'll be coming up on a later video too. So now, like I said, we're gonna pour this little knee wall and this knee wall is, the garage is gonna set down about four inches below the, the house floor. So there's gonna be a little bit of a curb there. And he wanted to make sure that his, his stick built wall between the two garages was up off the floor just to help keep it dry when he sheet rocks it. So, we poured in this nice little knee wall here. We're going to stick some rebar in it, stick some anchor bolts in it. And then you'll see what it looks like coming up here towards the end of the video. I was the one that did all the forming here. I formed up all the 2x12s. I formed up the knee wall. This is like one of the things I do while Luke and Darren are power trialing the floor. You know, I'll come and get all these forms up and get everything ready. So now I'm using that, that DeWalt pencil vibrator. So when we strip this knee wall, those, form, those walls will be all nice and smooth. That thing really does make a big difference. I've had that in other videos. I know some of you guys have got that, but... Boy, if you pour concrete and you don't have that thing, you, it, it'll definitely make your life a lot easier. It's worth the money. So Luke's got a couple of 20-foot bars there. Those are number four bars, so those are half-inch pieces of rebar. We're going to stick those out into the house floor just a little bit to make sure we tie the wall together with the floor. And then I'll have a couple smaller pieces here I'm going to drop in just to finish it off. We're going to end up just pushing those down about three inches below the top of the concrete. This is very similar to the to a, you know how we would pour a knee wall on top of a concrete floor like around a garage or something like that we'd form it up similar to this brace it off and then come in and pour the concrete and drop the rebar in just like this if you were pouring a let's say a one foot wall on top of a garage so now Luke and I are just getting it floated off nice and smooth and then the builder wanted some anchor bolts in this thing right down the center of it so I'm going to drop in. I'll show you how I drop those anchor bolts in. And he wanted them sticking up about two to two and a half inches. That string I'm holding, that was just to make sure the forms stay nice and straight as we pour. There, so we're using, I'm just using about six inch anchor bolts here. And he wanted them every four feet. He wasn't real fussy, like, measuring it out or nothing. He just wanted me to drop them in about every four feet.
Luke's just cleaning up a little bit of extra concrete, getting it thrown out. So when we get ready to come back and pour that garage floor, we won't have to deal with it. So that's how we poured the duplex floor and the knee wall along with it. Stay tuned for the end of the video, guys. This is the little knee wall in between the garage you're seeing us pouring in the video. He just wanted to raise the wall up off the concrete floor. So that's what that little knee wall is used for right there. All right guys, so if you wanna learn how to do concrete like we do, how to pour and finish concrete, stamp it, stain it, or even how to grow your own business like I have, then you're gonna to wanna to join the Concrete Underground. That's my private training academy. So the link is in the description below. Check that out, and we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.